Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to repair this keypad. This is an IDS alarm system. Uh, it doesn't really matter which panel I'm using and it also doesn't matter if it's the LED keypad, the touch keypad, uh, it could even be a zone expander, it could be the bus isolator, the remote receiver. All of these use the same principle. They connect via this bus. There's a positive and negative, and then there is a data plus and a data minus, and that's how the signaling takes place. Now, because of lightning or other voltage surges, I have found that a lot of the time we have an input stage failure. This is the same on any of the IDS devices that are using the bus. Here I have a few standalone expander boards and they have the same problem. So I'm going to demonstrate the repair on the keypad and you can apply the same repair on the keypad, receiver, uh, and any other of the devices as long as it is connected via the bus. Right, so what is the problem? The problem is as follows. Right, here I have my keypad and notice it, was, it won't let me enroll it. I mean, you can hear the button press and there you can see it's connected correctly. Positive, negative, data plus, data minus and there it's connected also to the panel but it just won't function. And what has happened is the input stage has gone faulty. Right, so I'm going to disconnect this now from the panel and I'm going to show you the repair. Right, so the problem is the input resistor from the D+. plus. Now, I've disconnected the power, so don't worry about that. So from the D+, plus, it goes through a 10 ohm series connected resistor. And then it goes to a diode. Right, then from the D-, minus, it also goes through a 10 ohm SMD surface mount device, surface mount resistor. And then also to a diode. Now... I have two diodes over here and then there is a third one and what we'll see is two of these diodes are broken and these two resistors have popped. So if I take my meter and I quickly show you what I'm referring to. Right, so I'm going to measure the resistance. Uh, the power to the board is off and notice there are my leads, almost zero ohms and I want to measure the resistance across this first resistor which should be 10 ohms. Notice even when I measure here it's saying OL, oh, offline, it, the, the resistance is infinite. So if I go to the other resistor, look at that, same story. Now I have a board which is functional and I'll quickly show you what it should read. So here is a board which is functional and look at that resistance. There's my 10 ohms and over here uh, there's my 10 ohms. So immediately I can see that those two resistors need to be changed. Now the next thing is this diode, one diode there, one diode, so there's a few diodes here, sometimes it's the two and uh, sometimes it's actually just the one, I've had that as well. Okay, so I'm going to do a diode test, a diode is, think of it like a one-way valve, it allows current to flow in only one direction. So over here I've got a diode and I'll quickly demonstrate the test. So the diode has a direction, the black stripes telling me that that is the negative side, so if I want to see if the diode works, I'll put the positive on that side and the black stripe goes with a black lead. Now I'll just put it onto diode test and there you can see my meter saying 0.57 volts. In order to get this diode to open, I need to forward bias it with just over 0.57 volts. That means it will conduct when I have 0.57 volts. But and now when I reverse the diode, notice that the diode does not conduct. So it is closed because my meter is uh, applying about two or so volts and it is not conducting. So this diode is functional. That is how the diode is supposed to operate. Now let's have a look at the circuit. So I'm going to put the positive there on that side and the negative over there. And notice the meter, it's saying it's a dead short. So what has happened is this diode has shorted out. It's become a dead short. Let's look at the one next door. Uh, same, same problem and the other one, all of these diodes are dead. But we might find that when I disconnect the one, the other one is fine. So if I compare it to the board which is functional, Notice there, 0.677, so that's also acceptable, usually to forward bias a diode, it's about between 0.55 and 0.7 volts, so that is fine, and let's look at that one, 
also fine and let's look at that one also fine but very important when you're doing the diet test flip the leads around and test it again there's my meter saying OL offline telling me that the diet is open circuit there it's open circuit and there it's open circuit so in this case I need to remove these three diodes and those two resistors and replace them now in this repair I don't have any surface mount resistors and diodes at hand i'm just gonna have to repair it using this size so it might look a little bit funny first prize is to go and get a 10 ohm smd resistor i don't have so i'm going to use these it's going to be a little bit odd they're going to be a little bit oversized and the diodes are also going to be oversized but i'm just going to show you so when you need to do the repair you can go and get the correct components now for this diode i'm not a hundred percent sure or what diode it is it could be a Zener diode because it looks like an input stage in my case I don't think it's a Zener diode because I did do a test on a working diode from one of these boards and I was able to apply more than 50 volts to that diode and the diode didn't open so in this case I'm th I think this is an IN4148 diode it's a very popular diode so I'm going to remove these and replace it with an IN4148 so I'm going to remove resistor, resistor, da, da, da. Now you will need a soldering iron to do the repair. Uh, then uh, this diode is dead. So in this case, uh, the three diodes were dead. Now I left this diode here for a reason because sometimes it's just the first two, but in this case it is all three. So I uh, now I've just going to remove this as well now I have this faulty receiver board what I've done is I've just removed two of the SMD diodes from here and there's another two over here so I'm just going to remove these so in this repair I'll also be able to use one of these SMD diodes or maybe even two just to make it a bit neater Okay, I managed to pull off three of the diodes from another board and there you can see my little test 0.5 and if I swap the polarity you can see that it's an open circuit. Uh, same with this one and if I swap the polarity. So these three diodes are functional and I'm going to use these instead of the larger ones because it would be a little bit of a mess putting these big diodes over here. So I'm going to use these SMDs. Now, just before I do the repair, I do want to just measure the other resistors around here just to see how bad the damage was. There's a 10 ohm, and over here, there's a 10 ohm, so those are functional. And then I'll also just measure between these two pins on this IC, and uh, there it's in the mega ohm range. So this IC input stage has not been popped, so I can now continue. You will only be able to get a fair measurement once you've removed some of the components, particularly the diodes. So now I can insert the diodes and quickly do the repair. Right, so that's not the best job, but the whole bottom row here is all connected to each other. So it doesn't matter if it's a bit skew because that is connected to that, which is connected to that. What's more important is that the tops are not touching each other so they are now complete now i just need to add the two 10 ohm resistors right so there's the repair now notice that the resistor could also just be connected from there to there and for this one there to there uh, because if you look at the d minus it goes there to there and the D plus goes from there to there. So if you're battling with space, just connect it from there to the D plus or there to the D minus. Right. So that repair is now complete. And now I can just do a quick check and I can connect it to my main board. Right. So there it says version number 2.2. It says busy, but it should allow me to enroll it any moment from now. There we go. So it's actually remembered the settings. So I can now use this keyboard and just to show you the keyboard is working I'm going to remove this resistor here which is the panic resistor and you should see the keyboard operate yes see there P1 alarm so this is the keyboard so this is the repair and there you can see the wiring over there right I just put some tape here just in case somebody's rough and depresses the resistor as you can see if I depress the resistor I don't want the wire to short out anything 
Now for this expander board, it has the exact same problem. I will now do the same repair for this expander board and any other of the IDS devices that has this problem. Now, just something to keep in mind, sometimes it's one diode, sometimes it's two, sometimes all three. Sometimes I've done the repair and it still doesn't work. And what I notice is between the two input terminals of the IC here, the, the resistance between the second pin and the third pin, when it's in the killer ohm range, I notice that I can't salvage the board. On the receiver, it's that resistor, that resistor, and these are the three diodes. On the bus oscillator, it is this resistor, this resistor, and these are the three diodes. On the expanders, it's this diode, this diode, this diode, and this resistor, and that resistor. Uh, lastly, I just forgot, some keyboards are different. You can see there's the one diode, there's the one diode, and there's the other diode. I've already removed the resistor from there to there, and the resistor from there to there. So you can see, if you just follow the track, so from D+, plus, it went through the resistor, and then it comes to that diode. So you can just follow the track, you see it goes there, and that, and that is actually the same connection. So this is the, the diode, and on the other side, it's there to there, and there's the diode. So this diode is actually faulty, and that diode is faulty. In this case, this diode is fine. So for this repair, I'll be removing this diode, this diode, the resistor I've already removed, and there's the resistor I've already removed. With this setup, uh, it's a bit different. They've got a coil here which is about two or three ohms. So instead of having the 10 ohm followed by another 10 ohm on the way to the IC, they've got a 10 ohm followed by this little coil and then it goes to the IC. Now, this coil sometimes also goes open circuited. All I do is I replace that coil with a 10 ohm resistor. So there I've replaced the coil. In this case, I only had one diode failure. So there I've replaced the diode. This is an IN4148 and these are the two uh, 10 ohm resistors as I said you can connect it directly from the terminal to there because that's where the resistor was It's not enough space here because I don't have the SMD components and then just having a look at a side view um, Not the greatest work, but it is functional and it is strong So here's the resistor and that resistor is replacing that coil So if your layout looks like this you might need to also replace this a little coil and there's the diode Please check, you might re be replacing one diode, you might be replacing two or three. Alright, thanks for watching and cheers.